Hello again guys, this is Trailmaker bringing you another great war game, European Escalation Replay. So, someone did a little of a nasty hacking job, and they successfully cracked the game. And they found out where the rankings are, which were previously unannounced. So I can say without a shadow of a doubt that MM Paco is actually ranked number 10 overall for the entire world. And our pack player, Komarami, is ranked 3. So this is probably the highest ranked game that I've pl I've really aired so far. You, like Most of the games I'm playing are like top 50, top 60 range. These guys are top 10. So I'm just going to speed this up and see uh, what these guys are choosing. While we're doing that, let's get them at the map. Um, so usually on this map, what players will do is they will move their base and take these two points, which are very close reinforcement for this middle location. This also prevents the enemy from taking this location here, since it's too easy to pick off, and it makes sure that their units do not get picked off from, you know, flanking units here. And on the same way, this, t this guy will also do the exact same thing, move here and here, and then attack into here. All right, speeding this shiznit up. Oh, I forgot the play button. Oops. Alright. So you see, yeah, entry point there, and entry point there. Okay, looks like we got here. I, I've covered M. Paco once, and uh, he goes a lot of armor personnel, tank destroyers, and tanks, which is, looks like it's what he's doing. I have not seen a single Koma Rami game. So he's going for armored recon, armored personnel carriers. A lot of them. Recon. So the good thing about the armored personnel carriers is that you can put them in the woods and they'll do pretty decent. Or you can throw them, you know, in a flanking position and they will actually flank the enemy pretty damn well. They're fast. So the game has commenced. And yeah, he's got the anti-air, but he's got lots of tanks, lots of stuff. He has VAB PCs, two of them. He got rid of his original one. And so having seen him play, he's probably gonna throw into Delta and Echo, it's just kind of a smart move. And this guy's as good as he seems, you know, rank third place, and he'll probably do the exact same thing. Except he's got a, a got anti-tank team, a, no real tanks though. So this is a very defensive setup. When you have tanks, your intention is really to push forward. All right, so here we go. He's going for, like I said, Delta, and this one looks like it's going to Echo. And on the pack side, looks like, yep, the exact same thing. Uh, this one's sticking here for some reason. I'm not, I guess he's not going for this tactic. Or maybe it's delayed. Maybe he's looking to win on a couple of extra resources, who knows. Uh, so the two helicopters scout each other. Both want to stay back a decent distance because they don't want to get picked off by the enemy's AA. Because generally speaking, everyone takes their AA and they go like, right click, right click, right click. So no one wants that. So yeah, this one actually has rockets. It's a pretty high end recon unit. And it's actually getting some very free kills, putting the score at 15. So we do have two infantry fighting vehicles with charisers securing this area. So if he wants to come in, he's going to have to deal with these guys. The charisers are moving forward. Not sure that's the smartest move considering timings. He wants to pick up these units right here. I'm not sure this is the smartest move. I mean, it is 2v1 right now, but there's just so much... Well, he's looking at this so maybe that'll turn the balance of it all. And it does. Although, he seems to be losing about... Yeah, he lost about an even amount of units there in that exchange. So, yeah. Not the best encounter for either of them. Oh, we do have this Scott coming around to try and flank. Uh, this is a little bit different from, I call it rally killing. The idea here is he's going to go around here and try and sit it right here to pick off units as they come in. It's common enough. A lot of people just win games with that. Like, you, here is actually even better. This is like a little bit of map imbalance. You can throw them like, I don't know, right here and just pick off every single unit that comes in. 
there's not really much they can do about it. Especially if it's uh, infantry that are also recon units, because they're pretty damn invisible. So not too much happens in this game. The game is actually a boring game, so that's something. Um, moving units, he's very quickly moved his scout back. He still has the motorcycle securing this place, and it's actually going to take a lot of resources. A lot of units take this. So we also have another flank coming in here. Same concept. That's to come around. Just stick him, you know, somewhere in here and just pick off units. So Blue's moving up more units. He's got an anti-tank gun here. He's got some tanks. He's got the anti-tank team here. And... Oh, that was kind of bad luck. His Cobra spawned just as this thing came. The EVs and the Legion come off to take this out. And down here looks like, yeah, they got caught by a recon. So these guys will also have to evacuate before then. Um, these guys tried to pick in for fight, but moved away. What else do we have going on here? That's about it. So it also is at kind of like a stay position. Cobras are very quick out of ammo. Uh, maybe these, I don't think they'll get away though. I'm sure the Cobras will chase them down. And this Scott is trying to move into a new position. It did successfully evade the recon. We do have a minor engagement here. Some helicopters wiping out four units. This is a pretty even game, all things considered. Like, I'm not worried just to bleed by 15. But this will probably make up. Yeah, this will definitely make up. These Scots moving. This is a, uh, a scaling Scott. These are very low cost units. And you'll see when the air comes out. Like he's going to get a lot of points off this. And the idea here is like you just want to rally those forward. Unleash them if there's any infantry there and you'll get a lot of points. If not, you're just figuring out where the enemy is so that your artillery can fire in and attack. And this is, like I said, very common tactic. The reason why you went up to two instead of one was just because it was just one and just die. And it wouldn't be able to scout anything at all. So he's wisely pulling back his anti-tank team. Doesn't want to lose that. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty boring game, just as per the description of the game. We're 10 minutes in. This is how like good these players are. We're 10 minutes in. They're pretty deadlock even. They have almost all their forces, and I mean, really, no one's been making bad moves. So the scouts coming up, looks like they're going for another uh, attempt at a flank, and just position them right here, and that's, like, this shows you how good these players are. He does have, he has a recon here, he has a legion famas, all protecting this route of entry. Nothing else. The gazelle is spinning around, looks like he's going to catch the scout off guard. <coughs> we have another scout moving in here, once again, trying to flank him. If he can steal this FOB, or even destroy it, that'd be huge as well. The scout, like I said, did get picked off by the gazelle. But this also means he's scouted the gazelle. So now the gazelle has to move back because he knows right off the bat he's been scouted and picked off. Two free combat levels just motor strike because this gazelle flew over it. Oh, looks like something's happening here. A Grenzer recon has moved in and is scouting this position. So now we have some recon, uh, some artillery shells hitting where, I guess this location here maybe? Looks like it's more like in the open here. Alright, speeding this back up. Pretty big encounter here. The unit did just get taken out. The AML is charging up its mortars, and the, the mortar is right in the open. So he's gonna have to relocate, which he does. Uh, he wants to hit right here in this woods. A command. Ooh, that's not big. Okay, this is really rare. Both players have moved commands up to the four position. The reason why this is rare is because, well, all your units are here. All your attack units. It's very easy to snipe. This is worth 200 points dead meaning that whoever kills them, their, their one first is going to get a very, very massive lead. He pulls back his command, knowing full well it's not safe. And he's now pulling back his command, it's not, it's not safe. But you'll notice that they're not moving it back to India, or in this case, Charlie. And the reason why is because it's just too easy to lose. So we do have uh, a pretty high encounter, actually. It's mostly infantry. These guys patterns are worth quite a bit. So if he can take it the rise patterns, that'd be huge. But I think he will. And it looks like Red's going to lose this little engagement. He's just got two few units. 
See, if this was a lesser player, they would abandon this position, move these all up, and attack in. But these are not lesser players. They're keeping their flanks in engaged. Looks like the rise pattern was very luckily pushed down, making it a lot more even of an encounter. We're dealing with an infantry vehicle and two infantry, so this could really go either way. The chancers are running in, trying to get position. This, these two chancer farmers looks like they're getting pushed back. No, nope, they're going into the into the this area there. We have artillery fire pounding this location. But could have got that command, but he pulled it back just in time. Uh, we have a concrete going out for a snipe, and he did. He sniped a, a, sniped a single anti-aircraft vehicle, and then he ran it back. Just a very smart, very, very fast snipe. He knew what he's going into. So he's been doing this the entire game. He's got the Scott coming around. All he wants to do is just place her right here and snipe in this way. But there's just too much guarding this. He, can, he might want to just abandon this strategy at this point. Um, so we have our self-propelled artilleries. I don't want to call them self-propelled artilleries, just artilleries. And I think they're pounding to the woods here. Nope, pound the pass. They're pounding to these woods here, which is... Whoa, there's so much stuff here to hit. But Como Romi is currently in the lead. A very, very, very close game. Now he's pounding these woods. He's being forced to move all the stuff back. Because all these vehicles are very, very fragile against artillery. The command is... I don't know what he's going to do with that. I also don't. Uh, where's the other command at? There was another command. Hmm. So he tried to move the command up and get some, a, free, a few more points, but it wasn't worth it. He's lost so much life on that command, it's almost dead. Lucky artillery shots will kill it. I will guarantee you. There's lots of gazelles coming in. The second this guy screws up, I'm going to take advantage of that. Four AMXs with infantry, the infantry drop off, and now he's moving back. And, yeah, he's losing the chassers, but he's not losing the vehicle. Like, these guys were all worth like 5 or 10, the vehicles were worth 10, so losing them separately, not such a big deal. This, this artillery fire here is brutal. I like no vehicle that is, that is ridiculous, this... What's this called, a... a Malka? never heard of that. It's very effective though. It doesn't have a, a spread that other vehicles have, but it doesn't do the same amount of damage. So we have a position with the Pimas and uh, from the Frenchoir, but they're getting picked off pretty easily. Komoromi taking them massive lead here now, out of 200 points. The biggest lead we've seen in this entire game. Uh, Blue on the other hand, M.M. Paco is moving around. He's got um, some recounting in this actual thingy here, this battle is going to pay off though, maybe. The stealth is definitely not in his favor right now, but he moved up, he got stunned, and the moto struggles did take him out. So we have another pretty big maneuver coming up here. He's moving in and taking stuff out left and right. This poor Amex Rollins anti-aircraft gun, it just not, doesn't belong there. The gazelles were going to try and snipe stuff, and you see he moved in, attack, ran back. Moved in, attack, ran back. He has some martyrs coming out, which is trying to make vehicles, and they're going to try to take care of these infantry vehicles. This one's going in, and this is just the mistake that MM Pop was waiting for in this whole game. Just such a massive mistake, such a massive troop movement into probably one of those more powerful flanks. The Tunguska has to run away because he has no cover. Fortunately, MM Pop was more extended himself. And he's running right to the fire of uh, this. Oh, here's the smirch. Ugh, the smirch. Everyone hates smirch. It only get, it has to be able to run away, but it doesn't seem like high much damage. Looks like Blue's moving with everything. He's pushing in, pushing him back. He can get this one here. Let me push. Oh, and he did. And he just keeps pushing forward. Oh, it's the game. Because it's game 15. Oh my god. If you just saw what happened there. And then Paco almost had the game. He moved in all of his units. And even though he was gaining ground, he lost because Komoromi's units took him out. Wow. I didn't see that coming. Well, thank you for watching another great game. And uh, join in tomorrow. I'll have a lot more. Thanks for watching.